Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and welcome to Crafting with Kathy with a Christmas theme. Today we're doing another gift idea with the alcohol inks and this time our canvas is going to be a magic wand. So a perfect gift for the Harry Potter lover in your life, like children or grown-ups, whoever would like a magic wand. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the pinata colours. Um, we're going to be using uh, Calabaza Orange. I'll actually, I think, use brass rather than gold and some tangerine. We might even pop some sangria in there. See how it goes, see how I'm liking it. Now our wands, we have three different designs. These are all hand turned by my son. So we've got three different designs. We've got the Telesto and the Du... Or a more smoothly turned one. So those those options are there on the website. Well, there's the list of what options you've got on the website, and then you can put that into the order notes section as to what option you would like. Okay, so starting off now with our core A wand, what I've done is I've actually covered the whole wand end with masking tape because I found when I was doing my first couple that I got inky fingerprints all over the rest of the wand and we actually need to give this one a bit of a sand back. Now these ones that have been finished have also been covered in a resin after they were after they dried. They've had a resin put as first a sealer spray and then the resin which gives them that fantastic shiny finish. Now an effect that I really like to do is to make the bead parts look different from the body part. So here we'll use a color a deeper color with the gold or the brass. And on the body, I'm using the same colours, but use it with the Blanco Blanco, which gives more of a marbled effect. Here, we've done different colours. I've done the green and gold on the bead parts. And here, we've done Blanco and the Mantilla Black to create the marble effect there. Okay, so let's start having a play. So here, we've got our wand. It's been, this end has been painted with a white satin uh, sheen house paint just an interior paint, so that gives us a nice non-absorbent surface for our inks to go on. And I will start off, we have got brass here, and I've got the Calabrese Orange, Calabaza Orange, sorry. I'll just get some lids off. Now remember, when you're working with the metallics, do still give them, a, even though you give them a good shake to start with, while you're working with them, you'll need to still give them a bit of a shake around, just to keep that metallic floating. Right, so I'm going to start with putting a little bit of our orange on. And of course, it's going to run around the shape. That's fine. We'll put some of our Claro on as well. And then drip a bit of brass on there. And just let it happen. And then we'll keep dabbing our colours on. And just keep moving it around. Now I can also use a brush to get in and move these colours around a bit if I find I'm not getting the coverage where I want it. Let it move, let it sort of do its own thing a bit. If I add a little bit of Claro in there, it's just gonna break up that brass and make it all happen. So let's put a little bit more orange on there. I'm just going to pop a little bit on my craft mat so I can work it with the brush a bit. And I've got somewhere I don't want it, so we'll just wipe that off there. So I'm just going to dab it right into where I need to get it to. And then we'll keep adding a little bit more brass on there and letting it just create and go into ripples. Now if you've got a straight line that you don't like, you can break it up with your brush or a little bit of Claro. Just see how that just moves and creates some magic. Now I don't think to me this isn't going quite deep enough. So as well as the orange, I'm going to grab a little bit of sangria as well. You do need to be a bit careful because we are working in a very small area. Uh, we've got bits dropping off there, so let's use that and pop it on. Now see we've got a great big blob of brass there. 
So we need a little bit of Clairo just to move that a bit. So you can come in with either your brush or you can use your blower tool and just move things around a bit with that. Particularly if you've got any blobs of the brass. Now let's come in with a bit of sangria and just let things keep on happening. So just dabbing it in there, letting it react with the brass. See how when you touch it, the brass actually moves away from it. And what I'm wanting to create is more ripples of brass, less blobs of it. So I'm just going to keep playing until I get it broken up and start getting the effects that we want. That's starting to look better. See, we've got a solid blob there. So we're just going to break that up a bit more. Drop a bit more sangria in there too. Make it nice and rich. Um, so I'm just dipping between the Calabri Calabraza Orange and the Sangria that I've got on my craft mat and just dabbing those on just until we get that broken up how we want it. So I'm just going to tilt the wand in different directions, just let it run a little bit. I'm tempted to add a bit more brass but I don't want to overdo it. Of course I'm going to add more brass and overdo it, aren't I, Matthew? Actually, what I'm going to do, to make it a bit more controllable, we're going to pop that on our craft mat as well. And I'll pick it up with the brush. and Just drop some in closer to that edge there. So just looking for where we've got a few areas where there's too much colour and not enough brass. A bit of clearer on my mat as well so I can just stop my brush from drying out. Let's grab a bit more of the Calabrese Orange. So now that's mixed with the Clairo so it's going to have even more effect on the brass. Okay I'm starting to be pretty happy with that. That's a bit of a blob there. So let's break that one up a bit. That's looking good. Maybe a bit more brass in up the top there. Okay, now I'm going to continue the same colours on the end here, but we might get on with the marbling so that we can actually see the different effects. So I'll pop that brush to one side for the moment. And on my mat, I'm going to add some Claro. Let's give our Blanco a really good shake. Now I do have a cup a weighted cup so if I need to put my wand down for a moment while I'm getting things organized I can sit it in the cup there so it's good to have a few things like that planned ahead so that you've got them handy so let's put our Blanco out Blanco is really cool and we'll have some tangerine and some coral because I'm working closer and closer to me. Now I've got a couple of brushes on the go for this one. So I'll try and keep one more for colours and one more for the Blanco. That won't last, but we'll, we'll try to start with. Okay, so let's actually pop some Claro on. And some of our Blanco. And then drop some colours in. Get a bit more blank on a brush and now just keep dabbing and you see you get this great soft marbling happening. Very cool. Okay, let's move the wand around a little bit. Are you seeing enough angles to see? Oh, 
wonderful. So I'm just going to paint it with a bit more Claro. Grab some Blanco and pop a bit of a base on. Then just drip our other colours into it. So we've got our coral. And a bit of tangerine. So it looks a bit nothingy like that. But then once we get the Blanco again and just work it all in together, they just start to move So I like having the difference with having some of it with the metallic and some of it not. I think that creates a really good contrast in the wand. So we won't do, so where we're doing the Blanco, we won't do any metallic at all. I do need to make sure that I get right to all the edges. If I think it's a little bit too white, I can come in and just drop a bit more colour in there and then dab back over with my Blanco to marble it. Now we're going to continue that up the rest of the, the base of the wand here. I'm just going to need a little bit more clear out on my mat. So I'm going to make sure that I get right into that little groove there so we don't end up with any white painted area showing. Let's start painting up the handle of the wand. But I want to do this effect that I did on the bead up the end there. So I'm going to stop where we get to the first one of those lines. Okay, let's start dropping some colours in. Looks ghastly, doesn't it? Let's get some more Blanco happening. And then it starts to look fabulous. Now your Blanco will try and dry on you, so I'm just going to pop my wand. Don't worry about the wand drying, worry more about what you're working with on your mat drying out. So I'm just going to pop a little bit more Blanco down there. And we're nearly out of our tangerine. So let's just top all those up a little bit. Because of the nature of alcohol inks, it doesn't matter if that wand sits there for a while because we're still going to be able to then add the Claro and keep working it. So let's paint some Claro on from this top bit. Paint on some Blanco and then get our colours in there. Oh, look at that swirl through there, that looks fabulous. Fabulous, darling. So I'm just going to be careful when I get up to that line. I'll have to be very careful when I do the top bead that I don't bleed gold into the rest of this. It can be a little bit tricky, but that's part of the fun of it, isn't it? Challenging yourself. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, last little bit here. So paint on our Claro. In with some Blanco. Matthew, I'm turning the wand this way and that. I'm hoping he's actually able to keep up with this. Just as well as a good cameraman, hey? I see now I'll be in the good books. I 
I think that is enough. I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. Now, while I've got those colors on the go, I'm going to do this bead as well with the same technique. So let's quickly get our Claro on. Blank coat, bit of colours. Running out of blanco on my mat again. Blanco, the same as the metallics, needs to be given a good shake. It will settle. So I'm just dabbing it over those colours, being very careful when I'm getting up near the, the edges of the, the end of the areas of where I'm painting. If we want a bit more colour down there, let's just add a bit of coral there. So that it's not all just the blanco down there. Just drop a little bit more claro in. You do want, you want some movement of the colours, but you don't want them all just mushing in together. We want to leave the colours moving and marbling without overworking them, if that makes sense. Now, Blanco. So by putting on the Claro on the Blanco first, it's giving these colours something to move with straight away. That was coral first, then tangerine. Make sure I get some up to the top part of the bead, some down to the bottom, and then blend it out with our little bit of blanco. So yes, I'm dabbing on, and yes, I'm trying to do some blending, but I'm also trying to leave the colors to do some of the blending themselves. And if you find there's not enough movement, just grab some more of your Claro and just pop that in and that'll help keep those colours moving. Until you're happy with your marbling, how brilliant is it? Just such a cool effect. I've picked up another colour there off my craft mat probably, so I'm just adding a bit of blank colour over the top of it. And just dab in Claro if, it's, if not, there's not enough movement. Just dab that extra bit of Blanco or Claro in there. You'll find, that, particularly because I'm only using two brushes, that your colours do start to get a bit mixed up after a while. So our Claro has got a fair bit of Blanco in it. But that's okay. Just teasing that bit out. It's still a bit of a blob. Right. And it's, oh, it's, it's really difficult to know when to stop. Matthew says to stop now. No, because see, now I've got a blob there. I did too much Blanco in a row. Now I just need basically Claro in there. See how that's now moving nicely for me? Pretty. Maybe just a few more blobs of coral. This is beautiful what's happened up here. I just need a little bit more colour, I think. And a little bit more Claro. So I think I've got enough Blanco happening. I just want a bit more coral and a bit more Claro. And 
and then it will be good. Okay, we're getting some runs from that, which is nice. You'll find your Claro and your Blanco start to build up a little bit of a, um, it's hard to say, it starts to make a layer. Um, I'm not describing that very well. I don't know how to describe it better. It, it sort of builds up um, almost like you're putting on it with a bit of resin or something there, but you're not. Tease it out with a bit of clear and then I think I should just leave that alone. Right, are we going to be daring and try to do our bead at the end without mucking things up? I will need to come in with a brush and you'll be able to see where there's a bit of white paint still showing. I don't know whether you can we get that on the camera. I'll need to get in with a little bit of orange on a brush there, but I might wait till everything else has dried a bit. And I've still got a little bit of green sneaking in there. Gonna run out of time. Okay, all right, let's go back to our orange. So because this is a smaller area um, and I don't want to touch that bit, I'm going to try and do this mostly with the brush. So we've got brass on our pad, we've got Calabrese orange, we've got some Claro, and I'll grab myself another brush. Let's just paint some Claro on here. So just down to where we want the colours to join there. Join but not quite touch. And it's going to go into those grooves really nicely. Now let's add some brass in there and let that just start to do its thing. So I've just got to be careful when I get close to where we've marbled. I did try and stop the marbling just before the groove so that this layer can go into that groove there. Oh, we did use a bit of sangria on the other one, didn't we? I need to add a bit of sangria into this one too then. Let's just work around, all the way around there. Excellent, now let's grab a little bit of sangria on our pad as well. And you can just see the brass move as it touches the colours. Where's my orange gone? Okay, got to be careful where the brass is trying to clump. So let's just get in there with our brush and just break that up a little bit. But we probably want lots of it near the end there. So I've just got to keep turning my wand and just dabbing here and there just to keep breaking up that brass a little bit. Because what it's trying to do is it's because we're working on a rounded surface, it's running down to the bottom and clumping. So by turning the wand and adding dabs of the other colours in, even a little bit more of the Claro, that just keeps that moving a bit and stops it clumping. Okay, 
So that's basically the wand technique. So to do it with the the brass and the rich colours where you want it to look almost like a gem and to do it with the Blanco where you want it to look marbled and we get that brilliant effect with the difference between the two colours. So let's bring in the other two wands to show you again how we get that different look between the metallic bead bits. You could do the whole lot in one technique, that's not a problem, but by breaking it up a bit into areas it gives it more interest. Okay, so that again will get resined um, sprayed with a sealer spray and then resined once I've got it dry but I'm just going to keep it moving for a few minutes here while I do a bit of a wrap up so thank you very much for watching hope you've enjoyed our Christmas series hope you'll have a go at some of the Christmas card ideas as well as some of the gift ideas and enjoy your crafting